time it. Hi guys, um, so we're online now, and um, yeah, I just want to um, say a huge thank you for Stefan Spencer, who's come to join us here um, and do some website critiques. So thanks to Stefan, and thanks to everybody who's submitted their websites ahead of time. Um, you, we will need you to um, interact with Stefan, so when your website is up, then please do request uh, to speak so I can approve your speaking request and we can have a two-way um, dialogue and, and yeah, get the most out of this session. So Stefan, over to you and um, yeah, good luck. All right, thank you. So just uh, for, um, just make sure that you guys know that I know my stuff. Let me give you a super quick intro of myself. Uh, you, you, you're not just listening to some, somebody who's making stuff up. I've been doing SEO since the 90s. Uh, I'm the co-author of The Art of SEO, which is this thick tome. It's the Bible on SEO. <laughs> thousand pages. Yeah. I know. Impressive, right? Uh, so it's published by O'Reilly. It's in its third edition. First two editions, I had Rand Fishkin as one of my co-authors, who you might have heard of, uh, founder of Moz, formerly known as SEO Moz. And by the way, you can get... Uh, the art of SEO in different languages. Like this is the Russian edition that just came out, which is pretty cool. Um, and I have a couple other books, uh, Google Power Search, which is all about how to find anything in Google. It's basically a, a market research uh, kind of book on uh, finding things like confidential business plans, forced to research reports that cost thousands of dollars. I found even credit card number files with, um, credit card numbers and expiration dates. That's not in the book, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing when you can tease out of the Google search engine uh, lots of amazing things. So that's Google Power Search. And then finally, my third book is Social E-Commerce, which is a little bit of a departure from SEO because it's all about how to drive online sales through social media. I've... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I got clients that you may have heard of, like Volvo. I worked with Chanel, Zappos, uh, CNET, CNBC, Bloomberg Business Week, um, uh, Sony. Um, yeah, so those are th those have been some of my clients. And um, what else do you want to know potentially? Um, just a little bit of trivia. You can do this internet thing from anywhere. Uh, I decided to test that theory. So I applied for residency in New Zealand and got in, never having gone there before <laughs> and decided to move my family out there. Uh, I was there for almost eight years. So that was pretty cool. Ran a US-based uh, business from halfway around the world. So that's me. Um, as far as like, what are we going to cover today? We are going to do some site critiques, but let me give you a little bit of a background or first on uh, Google Medic or the August 1st update or um, you know, whatever you want to call it, like you know, welcome to hell. I don't know. You know, it's just like, let me give you a little bit of a background on what's going on there and why we need to build up our expertise, authoritativeness and trust um, aspects, the EAT, in order to compete in this new world order. So you may or may not be aware of uh, some of the writings out there in relation to um, uh, the August 1st update, but let me share uh, my screen here. All right. So let's start with uh, one of my favorite articles about the update, which was from Marie Haynes, somebody I got to meet uh, a couple months ago, actually, in Helsinki at an exclusive SEM Rush event uh, where they wined and dined us uh, for a few days. Uh, it was pretty fun. So I think she's spot on with this uh, analysis, the um, focus on EAT 
isn't just something she made up. It's from the Google Quality Raiders Guidelines, which used to be super secret, and yet it would get leaked. Uh, as new additions came out of the Quality Raiders Guidelines, then that would get leaked as well, and Google eventually gave up and then just released it. Uh, so the latest version of the Raiders Guidelines is this one that just came out in July. And they 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 really uh, beefed up this document, and you might think, well, why is um, why is Marie referring to this niche that we're in of health as YMYL, your money or your life? She didn't make that up. It's straight from the Quality Rater guidelines. Can you imagine that Google has this army of, uh, uh, of human reviewers ready to hit the big red button on your website or on part of your website. And what are they looking for to determine if they should hit the red button or not? They're, they're using different criteria for YMYL pages, your money or your life. They're, they're less forgiving <laughs> when it's a YMYL page. They're looking at the what's the main content, the MC of the page. What is uh, the evidence of EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness? What are some of the other factors besides EAT that go into page quality or what they refer to at Google as PQ? You really get an inside view of how Google thinks about webmasters and websites and content. See, the problem is most new websites are spam. If it's a new website, probably chances are, the statistics show that it's spam. Most likely it's spam. So you're better off shooting first and asking questions later if you're Google, because most likely it is spam. So they distrust you right out of the gate. You have to build up your reputation. Uh, SEOs used to call that the sandbox. You don't really hear that terminology so much anymore, but rest assured that you still are on probationary terms until you prove yourself. And it's not just your content that's on probation. It's you as a content creator. Google tracks you as an individual and assigns your value in, in quantitative uh, in a quantitative form. They have metrics for your value as a content creator and not just for your content, not just for your website and your web pages. It's not about page rank. I mean, it's still a thing that still exists. Page rank is an internal metric that incorporates trust and as well as authority and importance. And not every web page is equal, obviously. And people think of entire sites as having a page rank or uh, a link equity, you know, DA, domain authority, DR, domain rating, um, trust flow, citation flow. Those are metrics from Majestic. <clears throat> there are lots of metrics out there that try to get at what Google thinks, <clears throat> what Google um, believes about your website. <clears throat> But these are approximations. Nobody has hacked into the Google Plex, into the Google algorithms, and have figured out what the true uh, metrics are. But we can ascertain if we have a trust problem, or we have an importance problem, or we have a relevancy problem. And it may not be easy for you to make that uh, call because you don't live and breathe SEO. That's why we're here today, so that I can walk you through my thought processes as I'm evaluating in real time your websites. And it's not just the people who have submitted sites in advance that are going to have this opportunity. The fact that you are here showing up and a lot of people who did register are not, and just thinking they're gonna watch the replay, they don't get the benefit that you're gonna get of being able to say, hey, what about my site? Here's my URL. Tell me about whether I have a trust problem or I 
have an expertise problem or you know some other issue that you deem to be a, a potential reason why I took a big hit on August 1st. Okay, so we have this huge 160 page document. Yikes, who wants to go through that, right? Crazy. This is what that army of human reviewers at Google are having to familiarize themselves with. This is their world. You don't have to get to that level. I mean, here's the part about PQ, page quality. These are the main factors. Google is opening their kimono to show you what is most important. And one of those is EAT, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. This is an area where you guys are really deficient. Um, the sites that I've already looked at, which are over a dozen, um, all have this problem. Uh, and it's, a, it's addressable. We can solve this. And it has to be solved. Because if you just leave it the way it is, you will continue to get um, a fraction of the traffic that you used to get. I mean, many of you guys are here because you took a hit on August 1st. So let's address that uh, with pragmatic, uh, actionable, uh, uh, needle-moving activities. Right? So you can either be activity-focused, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't get you the outcome you're after. Or you could be outcome focused. That is the differentiator. That's where you're going to win. If you're outcome focused, many of the activities that are so-called best practices in SEO, things that you quote unquote should do, you'll never get to because they don't move the needle enough. If you're outcome focused, it's like you could imagine having, uh, let's say you're, you're doing archery. You got to target the the bullseye is in front of you and you want to hit it. You've got all these arrows and you've got your quiver and you know, you've got your, your bow and you're going to, um, you're going to take an arrow out of your quiver. You're going to aim for the target. What's your outcome? And maybe you hit it. Maybe you don't. Let's say you don't. Okay. Well then you take another arrow out. It's another activity, another thing that you believe to be, needle moving or high impact and you aim again. Maybe this time you hit, okay? You got your outcome, you hit the bullseye. Why would you go through the rest of your arrows? Like, oh, I never got to my meta descriptions. I really should optimize those because that's what I'm told is going to um, be a best practice for SEO and so I'm gonna do that. What a waste of your time. Do you know that meta tags in general do not move your rankings one iota. Meta keywords, in fact, never counted in Google ever, 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 not even on day one. Meta descriptions didn't count either from a ranking standpoint, but they're used in the, in, in the snippets that are displayed in the search results. So there's a second order activity there for you to do. If you run out of all the first order activities like, okay, I've optimized my titles and I've done, done my keyword research and I've done my, uh, my link building, my link outreach and all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm like set with that. I've done everything amazing and, and, you know, just completely crushed it. Now you got some extra time on your hands instead of watching Netflix. Yeah. Go and optimize your meta descriptions. Why not? Because you'll get a little bit of a bump in terms of increased click-through rate from the search results, but there's no there's no rankings benefit from your meta descriptions. So think in terms of outcome focus, not activity focus. This is not a big laundry list or checklist of everything that you need to do uh, to optimize for high rankings in Google. It's the 80-20 rule. It's the Pareto principle applied to SEO, what's the 20% that's gonna get me the 80% of the benefit? That's what I want you focused on. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this webinar. All right, so we have this 160 page document. 
we have a nice write-up from uh, SEM Post, Jennifer Slag, right, uh, did a nice analysis of the latest version, which is pretty cool. Check that out, right? You don't have to read 160 pages. You can just read her um, her take on all of the key points from that. And there's a little bit of uh, you know quoting from the document in there too. So that's if you're <coughs> I'm too busy to read 160 pages. There's also the search engine land article uh, giving you the heads up that the um, major update to the quality rater guidelines uh, is out. And a little more detail around how many quality raters there are. There are over 10,000. They're all contractors. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so that's just a little short read for you. And then this is a must read. This is the uh, uh, analysis of what happened on August 1st from Marie Haynes. Okay, so there you go. There's some good resources. There's a good uh, kind of um, stage setting for August 1st and what the issue is for you. Now, if we look at some real world uh, case examples of you guys that have you know, various issues with your trust and authority and, and mainly your link profile and your content that is um, causing you the pain. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll start digging in here. And, and I'm, I'm only going to look at sites where you're on the call. I got over a dozen volunteers offering their URLs in advance. And um, you are the luckiest ones of all because I actually ran a link detox on every single one of your sites. But if you are not here for this webinar, I'm not going over your results. <laughs> Why do we care about Link Detox? Because this is the most important tool in your tool set. It's from linkresearchtools.com. And uh, it identifies how toxic your links are. If you have a lot of toxic links, what's going to happen is that you are going to look overall as a like a low trust uh unworthy site to get rankings especially when we're dealing with health you know home remedies uh, uh alternative therapies medicines and, and stuff like that it's high risk google doesn't want to present something that's snake oil at the top of the search results and people die from it so they're especially putting the crosshairs on you guys. And it, you, it's not like this is gonna just come back on its own. This is a permanent shift. You have to play differently now. This is a whole new, uh, a new world order. So let me ask, um, is the guy or gal in charge of the manlyzone.com on this call? Do comment guys in the box if you're if you're online um, or do request to speak um, so we can get you on the microphone as well. Oh, here we go. Yes, perfect. Hansi can. Oh, here we go. Great job. Thank you. All right, perfect. And are are we able to? Uh, is it a guy or a gal? Because I'm not looking at the. Uh, Let's see. Uh, and this is the attendee list right now. Speak request has been approved. You should be able to speak. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm going to try and set you up as a as a presenter. Can you speak, Hansi, at all? All right. I'm going to... Okay, so maybe, yeah, press the microphone button at the top of your screen because by default everything is grayed out. So you need to push your microphone button and you should be able to speak. <laughs> ah, 
and just join the room. Okay. So we should. Uh, there we go. Yeah, push the um, push the microphone button. Uh, just to speed this up, guys, for the future, anyone that's submitted a website already or is wanting to, or ha wants to submit a website, just if you can submit your speak request now, then we'll queue you up to speed this up in, in the call. Hi, Andrew, can you hear me? Hey, yes. there you are. <laughs> Sorry, it's just running through a lot of tests on the, on the back end that I had to go through. No problem. Good to, good to hear your voice. So um, tell me what kind of drop or uh, impact you had with your site from August 1st uh, Medic update. Okay, so actually my site started dropping around about May 17th, but um, there's been a, a, a continuous drop over in the 1st of August. There was a relatively big uh, drop off. So the little traffic that I did have, I, I lost at um, 1 August. Okay. So this has been a gradual drop off over time and then a significant drop off again on August 1st. That's it. Got it. Okay. So that coincides with some of the stuff I'm seeing with uh, some of my clients. Uh, I have a client who owns a thousand plus websites huge portfolio and some of those are in the uh, in the health you know alternative therapies sort of um, space like uh, home remedy shop.com took a big hit on the from the August 1st uh, Google medic update and they were dropping over the last I don't know eight 12 months uh, steadily from before that too. So it sounds like you, you've got a similar sort of situation. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, okay. Have you done any kind of link analysis uh, to determine if you have a lot of toxic links or if you have a lack of trust uh, or lack of authority, anything like that? Yes, yeah, so I actually did a, a link detox, um, I think, about November last year, where a couple of the links were removed. Um, after that, I haven't. Uh, okay. I have lost a couple of links over the last, um, let's say, six months or so. I've lost links. Um, I've actually incorporated with another guy that owns about 500 PBNs, um, and he does this for a living as well. His recommendation was that I can't replace immediately all those links that are lost. So we have to build up the trust gradually, then just let's say I lost 50 or 100 links and which were quite strong PBN links, I can't replace that immediately. So I have to gradually build that up and get back into the favor of, of Google. That was before all of these okay. updates. So yes, that's terrible advice. Um, do not take advice from somebody who is running PBNs. That's number one. It's kind of like asking for relationship advice from a recently divorced person. Don't do it. Okay. PBNs are dead. And they're, they're not seemingly dead right this minute, but we're rapidly entering the world of artificial intelligence and you cannot outsmart an AI at Google. The AIs, the, just the machine learning algorithms, which is like the first level of AI. Machine learning, you have expert systems that are better at sniffing out low quality content, uh, like stuff that was done overseas or spun or anything like that than, than, than humans. And same with the link profile. Like you think that you're covering your tracks, you're you're outsmarting Google with the PBN because you haven't gotten caught yet, potentially. So you think. I mean, you're not going to get notified by Google that you're under an algorithmic penalty. And the algorithmic penalty 
is the way that you're most going to get hit. Most likely, you'll be the victim of a algorithmic penalty. Manual penalties, known as manual actions at Google, they they don't have enough team members to uh, hit enough sites to have a, a, a reasonable impact on the spam on the that's on the web. It's just another layer on top, but they're heavily, heavily reliant on algorithms to find the spammers. Okay, so manual actions, you will get notified via Google Search Console. There's a manual actions uh, uh, section there. That if you have gotten a manual action, you will be notified. Google has uh, confirmed that that's 100% of the time they will inform you. It didn't used to be that case or that way. They uh, changed their policy about that. So the vast uh, majority of cases, it will be an algorithmic penalty. There's no notice. There's no way to confirm absolutely you've been hit by an algorithmic penalty. And uh, you're relying on the algorithm letting you back out, out of jail. And we don't know if the algorithm ever is going to let you out of jail. And the algorithms now are self-learning, self-healing, um, autonomous. A, a Google engineer who programmed an AI will not be able to go into the code and see what the uh, the attributes are that the algorithm is using now to determine if you're spam or if you're legit. This is the brave new world of, of SEO. And how do you, what's the only way that you can outsmart an AI? It's probably by doing the right thing, eh? trying to be as legitimate as possible. Yeah, well, that doesn't outsmart it. It's just playing by the rules. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'll fall in line. I won't be a criminal anymore. I will uh, take the straight and narrow. Um, but how do you outsmart an AI? Like, how do you, because SEO is manipulation. We're trying to manipulate the editorial results. How do we outsmart an AI? Andrew, what do you think? Mm, I guess learn. We need to know what the, what, what it's doing, what the ranking factors are so that you can uh, how? Because even the Google engineers who program the AI can't figure that out. I'll give you the short answer here. How do you outsmart an AI? There's only one way, with another AI. Okay. Makes total sense, right? Like the AIs are going to be so much smarter than us. By 2029, uh, we'll have uh, artificial intelligence that will be at human level intelligence totally that's like mind-blowing right but it it doesn't stop there over the next 10 years it will become like a billion times smarter than us the only way we will be able to keep up is by augmenting our own uh, biology with technology we will become human techno hybrids cybernetic hybrids scary huh that's the brave new world and um in the short term you just want to make some money in the next five years with your uh, uh your your affiliate site okay that's that's great and you still need to think about where things are have already headed because rank brain is fully operational at google using uh they're using that on uh to determine this the search queries uh in, the intent of those search queries and the users pretty crazy that they can get inside the heads of the searchers to understand what their intention is but not based on the words they're using but on uh what they meant when they used those words that's pretty mind-blowing so this is just the beginning and um if you are um, if you're trying to uh, outsmart Google, good luck. PBNs are trying to outsmart Google, and that's a ne never win situation. Those days are done and gone. Just like uh, the days of desktop usage of Google surpassing mobile usage are gone forever, we will never get to the point where desktop will be more uh, 
there will be more searches happening on Google from desktop than from mobile. Never going back. We're never going back to a time where PBNs are, are uh, viable. If you are using PBNs, you need to stop and you need to go white hat. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not taking an ethical, moralistic position on this. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm being straightforward about this. It's about risk. I'm a scientist. I'm an SEO scientist. I know what works. So I know what doesn't work. I test. I have hypotheses. I, I have control groups. I, it's science. Yeah, I've got a book called The Art of SEO, but it's science. Okay, so let's look at what your latest link detox looks like. You ready? Yeah, ready. Thanks. Okay. Here we go, screen sharing on again. I did not take the time with the other link detoxes to uh, classify the anchor texts manually, that's a part of the process, but I did do it with your site. Okay, then I'm bad on first. What's that? Oh, you're glad you're then first, I'm yes. Bad, bad I'm, first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're first too. <clears throat> okay, so here's the bad news. You are above average in the danger zone. I'd say anywhere even close to a thousand in detox risk is uh, is danger. Danger or danger, Will Robinson. So you got an 873, and that's with the manual classification of uh, anchor text, so it's even more um, uh, accurate. Here's how the distribution of your uh, your links looks like. We're looking for diversity in the uh, distribution of links by type, by theme, by uh, anchor text, by power trust, by power, by trust. Um, so LR LRT, Link Research Tools, has a, um, a, a few different metrics that we want to know about. One is LRT power, another is LRT trust, and then LRT power trust, which is a combination of LRT power and LRT trust. So LRT power trust, power is importance, and trust is trustworthiness. Remember the T from eat. Um, and trustworthiness is uh, not based on a, um, well, what it is based on is distance away from high trust websites. If you are far away from super high trust websites, you're gonna have really low trust. So this is where it gets alarming. Already I'm concerned, right? We've got an 873, this is not good. This definitely needs to be addressed. Out of the zero to 100 scale for LRT Power Trust, which is importance times trustworthiness, the vast majority of the links pointing to you, 84% have a zero out of 100. So that should be alarming. <laughs> Okay, so so with with this whole thing, we have lost a lot of of links over the last, let's say, um, nine months to a year. Would you go and and um, clean up the backlink profile? So there's basically, if I look at this, eighty four percent of the links are going to be lost. So in terms of of powering up the website, I know this doesn't count for much, but what I do have left, it's going to be uh, diminished in any case. Is that yeah. is that your is that what you're basically adding to now? Um, the way I would describe it is you're you're basically trying to get out of jail. You're in front of the parole board. <laughs> Not that I know much about uh, about uh, the the real parole board, but imagine Google is the parole board, and you're tr trying to make your case to an algorithm that no, no, I'm going to clean up my act. I'm 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 going straight and narrow here. I'm I'm going to you know be on the on the straight and narrow for for from now on. And you don't get a job. 
all you're doing is you're not apparently committing crimes. You're not very convincing to the, the parole officer of Google. You have to have an upstanding uh, nine to five job. So what's the equivalent to that for uh, in terms of Google? You need to do your cleanup, which is not just a disavow. You need to do link outreach for uh, link removals. So you're going to do link removal outreach using a tool like Pitchbox. And hopefully you'll get some percentage of uh, these of these toxic links removed. But it won't be a very uh, substantial percentage. It'll probably be a single digit percentage. But if you don't bother with this, you go straight to the disavow and you hope for the best. The problem with that is it's not very convincing to an algorithm that's not wanting to make life easy for the, the spammers. The easy road for a spammer is they get immediate feedback and they get to figure out where the line is and just cross it and then quickly get back off of that side of the line and everything gets you know copacetic again that's not the way that google works because they don't want to reward that kind of behavior so that's why it takes time for positive seo changes to kick in because it's by design the the, the algorithms don't want to uh, reward too much seo other than just making a good website that's got good titles and helpful content and good user engagement. And that. So they want to give you too fast a feedback and uh, they don't want to let you out of the, the penalty box too quickly, especially. So you're probably in the penalty box or uh, what feels like the penalty box because you're getting filtered away out of the search results. So, yeah, that's uh, it's not a quick fix. Like we're going to just do a disavow, which probably will take us uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> you know, you can actually do that right in the tool. This is uh, you know, Link Detox, which is the gold standard tool for uh, the, doing this uh, toxic link triaging and then to build a disavow file. It's just a simple click on this export button and it builds you the disavow file. Um, I mean, you, you, you also have to confirm which links truly are toxic. And that means going through all the uh, suspicious links, I mean, the suspicious pages as well, determine if they're toxic or not. And then, um, you mark them as to, as ones you're going to disavow. So well, it's a, it's a, it's work, but it's it's not uh, overwhelming. What becomes overwhelming is then to do outreach, asking for link removals, and you have to follow up. And you can use the tool Pitchbox to um, automate a lot of this. Like the follow up can be automated to a certain number of days after you send the initial outreach request for removal and then you send a follow-up, reforward the original email and say, look, I'm, I, I really need a response from you. I don't want to submit you to Google um, as a spam site, but I will if I don't get a response. And then you get even more aggressive uh, and short with them like, okay, I'm giving you till Friday and then I am submitting you in my disavow file. I'm reporting you to Google. Don't make me do this. Just Remove the link. Okay. And, and, and by the way, if you didn't build the links, you still have to go through this process. Google assumes, you know, shoot first, ask questions later kind of thing, because most sites are spam that show up in, in the uh, brand new in the Google index. So uh, you, you could have gotten penalized because of a competitor. You got targeted. They didn't like you. They wanted to knock you down the rankings. They wanted your spot in the search results, whatever. And they built a bunch of really low quality links. Bought them from overseas for 30, 40, 50 bucks. Thousands, thousands and thousands of links. And now you have to clean up the mess because it is as assumed by Google that you did it. That's the real world.
unfortunate, it sucks, and it's not fair. But uh, that's that's the way it is. And another thing, and this is negative SEO. Another thing that's um, a real risk, negative SEO thing that's happening. This is so clever and evil at the same time. Um, competitors will pose as you emailing legitimate sites demanding that the link is removed saying that you're spam and I'm going to report you to Google. And now your legitimate links get removed cuz they don't think to like uh check that this is for real the the company it's actually a competitor. It's horrible. This is uh the sort of stuff you have to deal with. So anyways, um I'm just going to go through a few more of these graphs so you get a sense for uh, what the situation is. It's not just about having a lot of toxic links. And it shows here what the rule are, uh, rules are that were, were hit. Okay, so tox1, that means that it's uh, de-indexed from Google, the site that is linking to you. That's uh, obviously a bad sign. Most likely it's a penalized site then. Another uh, rule is that will get flagged is Tox2, which means that it is a dangerous website, malware infected, virus infected, um, malicious software. So that's Tox2. Tox3 is if the site's link profile looks really horrible and sketchy. And of course, all these penalties flow over to you. So. And, and um, remember, negative SEO is a real thing, and you can get targeted. So it's not it's not so easy to identify that you've been targeted by a, a bad actor, because not only do they use links to to uh, drag you down, but they use redirects and even canonical tags. If they are targeting you with a, a Link rel equals canonical from a toxic website. Most link analysis tools will not show that as a link. The only tool that I know of that will analyze uh, and, and will catch this and analyze it, included in the toxicity reports, is link research tools. They actually analyze the, the canonicals. So you can have a cross site canonical from a toxic site to yours which would be almost impossible to detect without link research tools. And um, that's how you might get gotten penalized. Another thing they'll do is they will take a toxic site and they'll 301 redirect it to you. That's easier to catch, but it's still difficult, more difficult than just a link. Um, another thing that's very important to know about this tool is that it does not announce itself as it comes uh, around to the bad neighborhoods, spidering them. Majestic, for example, a tool I love, follows all the good bot, bot uh, guidelines and announces itself like, hey, my user agent is Majestic Bot. Hello, here I come. And then uh, the smart, spammy websites be, oh, Majestic, uh -huh. we're not available right now. Or, oh, let me show you this really nice, uh, <laughs> Uh, clean version of my website, right? So Majestic will not show the toxic links. What Link Research Tools does that they don't advertise uh, publicly about is they will fake out these spammy websites and crawl as regular users from a range of IP addresses that does not leave a footprint, does not is not easily determined. It's in, in, practically impossible to figure out, like you can figure out when Googlebot's coming from an IP address range that, you know, the user agent doesn't announce itself as Googlebot because they're trying to catch you doing sketchy stuff, but you can still get an, enough IP address ranges from certain sources where you can know that, oh, here comes Googlebot. I know you, you're, you're just uh, in plain clothes today. Um, but you can't do that with link research tools. With its bot, you have no idea that it's a the, that it's the bot, which is a huge distinction between this tool and other tools out there. This is a this is a must have in the in the new world order. You must have link research tools, and in particular link detox. But there are other must have tools in their tool set besides link detox. 
So if you're curious about what these toxicity and suspicious uh, rules are, there's a great help document on this, um, uh, which is public and you can go to uh, help.linkresearchtools.com to find it. But here's what the page looks like. Um, and it just goes through what all of the toxicity uh, uh, labels are, what they mean and why they're considered bad and suspicious and all that sort of stuff. So this is triage. Triage originally from uh, back when, you know, there were battlefield uh, medics trying to figure out who's gonna live and who's gonna die, who needs immediate intervention. Triage is this person is going to die no matter what, with or without intervention. Let's just make them comfortable. This person will only live with immediate major intervention. So top of the queue. And then uh, the third bucket is this person is not have, does not have a life-threatening in injury. We'll put them next in the queue after all of the uh, life-threatening uh, will die without intervention people. So now if you apply that uh, idea to links that are pointing to you, the toxic links are the ones that are really damaging you. The suspicious links, they're not quite sure it's likely to be spam, uh, a spam site that's linking to you. Not quite sure, you better hand check it. And the third group is innocuous. It's not har har harming you. If In fact, if you disavow too aggressively those innocuous sites, you'll take a rankings dip, which really, that, that sucks too. Like, oh, I disavowed so much. Like anything that even you know, had the sniff of, of spam, it's gone. Well, that was not the best idea because if it's um, innocuous, it, it, it's probably helping you. Okay, so back to the report here. Um, there, there's a link detox screener that allows us to quickly uh, scan through these uh, sites, th these linking pages to see if they are uh, worthy of being marked as toxic, if they're suspicious already and we need to review them. You should probably hand check the toxic links too just to confirm that, yeah, that is that is definitely something I wanna disavow. And with the screener, you can hit the uh, add to disavow button um, into uh, add to the outreach list. There's very tight integration uh, between link research tools and Pitchbox. So that's really handy because uh, I don't wanna have to deal with export files and trying to kludge together a, a solution. No, this is like super tightly integrated. Christoph Kemper from uh, Link Research Tools and uh, Michael Janellis from Pitchbox are literally like best buddies. So they did a very tight integration. This makes it so easy for you to do the manual, seemingly uh, manual, but semi-automated outreach for the link removals. And remember, you have to do the link removal uh, outreach because you got to show that you put in the hard yards, you did the, the mea culpa. You didn't just take the easy road and create a disavow file. So can I just the ask algorithms you a question are looking on for that. that? Say that again? Yes. Can I just ask you a question regarding that? Um, how, sure. So you, you just mentioned an algorithm will pick that up. How would they do that? Because when you um, do submit a disavow file, that are, that's only the sites that you actually want to be removed. So this outreach to the sites and showing that they non-responsive and things like that, how, how does that all play a part in you actually getting out the, the penalty area faster then? Yeah, so uh, Google is very outcome focused too. <laughs> they don't care about the effort that yields no results, they only want to see the results. If you did your your level best to get these toxic links removed and you got no compliance, you might as well have not even done it. The algorithm is not going to pick it up. Now, if you got a manual action, 
That's a different story. Then you can, uh, in your reconsideration request, you can provide documentation that you did all of this work, outreach, outreach, re, you know, follow-ups, nobody played ball with you. And they'll probably let you out of the penalty box. But that's a yeah, human being just, making a human decision on a on a human decision in the first place to penalize you. Yeah, because that's that's my that's my concern now is that the, this isn't a manual penalty. This is some algorithmic. It is uh, algorithmic. Penalty. Yeah, yeah. So so all of that effort basically, unless I do fall into a manual penalty, then I can go and show them that. But there's no ways for them in the meantime to actually pick up all the effort in the back end. What they will nope. probably see is if they compare a disavow file versus what is still alive, they would see, okay, there was some sort of effort. These links we picked up a month back, now there's nothing. But well, otherwise, they won't be able to see any effort on the back end. Yes. With, w they won't see the effort. They will only see the results. You don't need to include a removed website uh, from uh, you know, the, the cleanup uh, outreach in the disavow file. I mean, you could, but it's it's not necessary. If the link is gone, the link is gone. Hopefully, it never come back. But uh, you know, if it's re if it's removed, it's probably not coming back. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, and by the way, if you get uh, extortion uh, requests from the website owners that you're t contacting, like, sure, I'll remove your links for fifty bucks. Never ever pay. You never pay a kidnapper. It never works out well. Right. The extortionist is going to see you as a, a as a live target then and they're going to add more links. Not from the site that you paid to have the link removal from, but they'll use some of their other sites because they got a live one now. Never, ever, ever pay a penny to a toxic site owner to remove a link. Super important. But we got to get some single digit percentage of compliance here. Something that's measurable besides just one one site <laughs> removing the links. Because it only matters that you got the result. And yeah, great you, question. And that you'll keep for if if anything happens in terms of a manual penalty so that you can show that there's been effort over a period of time. But like we're standing now, that's just for your own sake and that I can see that some of the links were removed. So it's a result oriented approach. Yeah, it's only result oriented and uh, as I said, the, the real risks here uh, over time are, are all or, um, uh, algorithmic and very and it's a shrinking uh, percentage of, of manual. Thank yeah. you. Cool. So um, let's go back to the distribution here and we'll take a look at some other distributions. You might wonder why am I spending so much time on this one site? Because you need to know how this tool works and what to look for so that you can, we can go through these much quicker uh, as we go through the next ones. And we're, on, we're, we're not only gonna look at link detox, we're gonna look at other tools, use other metrics, and then I've got a follow-up uh, webinar that I'm doing uh, in, what is it, to like 11 hours time, 10 hours time, something like that? I think 10 hours from now. Uh, so that follow-up webinar, which you should all attend as well. I'm going to give much more detail on the tools that you're gonna need. But this is more critiques, and that's more like hands-on training on the tools. Hands-on as in I'm going to do, do it, you're gonna watch like over my shoulder <laughs> as I'm uh, using these tools, and uh, I'll walk you through all the different aspects. All right, so this is not good. 84% have a zero out of 100 in LRT Power Trust and the, of the pages that are linking to you. Let's look at the domains that are linking to you. It's the pages that are passing the link equity and the uh, link penalties and all that to you. It's not the site overall. It's the pages. If a page is linking to you and is so deep down the site tree that nobody links to it, uh, maybe it's even an orphan page that doesn't even get a link from its own site owner. It's an orphan page. Why would that page matter uh, in terms of its link uh, to you, like in positively, even if the entire domain 
the domain authority, DA, DR, domain rating, et cetera, looks really good. But it's an orphan page that nobody links to externally. There are no inbound links and there are no internal links to it. And that's where you're getting a link from. It's kind of irrelevant that it's got good domain authority, domain rating, power trust, citation flow, trust flow. So take this with a grain of salt, but it is indicative as well. The lack of diversity and the over uh, uh, reliance on uh, very low power trust websites. So the entire site, you've got almost a third of the sites that are linking to you have a zero out of 100 in power trust. Not the page, but the entire site is a zero. So that's a little bit alarming too. You do have some more in the higher end here. Um, so that's, that's better than nothing, but you have, you have too many here at the zero. Um, you know, I'd like to see higher than two, three, four. That's uh that's a concern. Okay. Let's look at the keywords, the anchor texts, brand anchors, 41%. That looks pretty good. Natural. Uh, would like to see that higher, but here's where I get really alarmed. 42% money keywords. That is so unnatural. And I know this number is real because I personally hand uh, manually classified all of your anchors. And they are spammy as heck. Super, super obvious that those are uh, link built and not uh, natural. What naturally yeah. happens, people use click here, read more, your URL, your domain name, uh, your website name, your, your personal name, your company name. Not natural. Way, way, I'd, I'd like to see this under way under 10%. And that is also an indication of the niches that we play in, to be honest. So when you do competitor research and you look at the type of anchors the guys are using, that is the trend that you're following. So when analyzing, and, and, and that's what I've done in the past, is I've actually looked at competitors, what their anchor text ratios are like, and trying to mimic more or less that. Yeah, that but you can't you do that. This. You can't do It's a different world now. Yeah. It, it, no, there's exactly that, but that's what worked in the past, unfortunately. So Yeah, so and now you got to clean that up. you got to clean it up because... because here, here's the issue. If you only look at your, and, and there's a great tool inside of link research tools that will do, a, uh, a, it's, it's a competitive landscape analysis. That's the CLA tool. It will take the top 10 ranking pages, uh, average them out and look at all these different um, metrics, the distribution of, of brand versus money anchors, the power trust, the uh, power trust of the domains, the, Link types, the I mean the the types of sites that are linking, and the types of links that, and the themes of the sites and all that, and and you want to mimic that naturally because what's winning today is probably what's going to win tomorrow, maybe. Actually, I say no, not anymore. This is uh this is the world of the AI that we have to uh, convince now, um, you know. So it might might be short term uh, uh, working for you, but it's not going to be future proof. You're not going to survive past another year, m maximum two. Like the law of exponential uh, or the law of accelerating returns and, and exponential technologies say that every year uh, the price performance of um, computing and, and other exponential technologies halves and, and or the, the, the price halves and the performance doubles. So there's Moore's law, there's Metcalf's law, there's all these different uh, laws that are behind this. But the fact of the matter is with the law of accelerating returns, um, the, the algorithms that we're going to be facing in just a few years time are going to be uh, like science fiction to us. Okay, so money anchors, gotta go. Um, link types, 
vast, vast majority are text links. That looks so unnatural. If I saw more like half and half, or at least two thirds, one third, that would look more natural. You have almost no image links. You have more redirects than you have image links. That is a hallmark of very aggressive link building. That's totally unnatural. That does not happen in the wild. Link location, always in the paragraph, uh, in, in, in paragraph content, never in uh, other places or almost never, 80 plus percent of the time in paragraphs. Again, looks unnatural. Looks like you've been <coughs> busily trying to game the algorithms. <coughs> themes. So the site themes are very heavily in the other category, which is a little concerning and surprising. Why not more health sites? Only 10%? That, that doesn't strike me as being normal. Um, for your category. Yeah, it used to be a lot better, but um, I've picked up a lot of really spammy type of, of links in the, in the last three, four weeks to the site. So yeah. I think that also threw out that, that curve. Yeah. All right. Site type, blogs, CMSs, wiki, social networks, that sort of stuff. So vast majority of blogs, which is normal. Some general, but uh, no CMSs and no social, almost no social networks. Looks uh, not diverse enough there. And um, there's actually, as you can see, a whole bunch of other things we could go through, like the backlinks and uh, keyword domains, HTTP codes, and things like that. So um, I'll, I'll end here with, um, you know, this is a pretty unnatural looking link profile and uh, a high enough toxicity level that you can't, you can't just leave this, you, you have to do a cleanup. Um, you can also look at things like the anchor text distribution. Here, we'll just go click on show all and we can see all sorts of pie charts and things. And, um, you know, we're looking for things like the, uh, a natural distribution of top level domains, TLDs. Like, uh, is there a mix of dot coms, dot nets, dot edus and govs and all that, uh, different country level TLDs, et cetera? Or is it all, all just dot com, dot com, dot com? And is it, um, natural looking in terms of the uh, anchor text, um, which I already said is not, but we can see what those anchor texts are. Estrogen blockers, look at the percentage of, um, uh, of estrogen blocker as the anchor text. Um, and then here's OTC estrogen blockers. You really have to add those in together because they're just so obvious money terms um, won't happen naturally. All righty. Um, one other tool I want to show is, um, Majestic and then we're going to move on to another site. We're going to put the manly zone in here for Actually, there is one more thing I want to show <clears throat> after we look at this. Your trust flow is much less than your citation flow. Trust flow is on, an, uh, on a logarithmic scale, as is citation flow. Page rank is on a logarithmic scale. The Richter scale is logarithmic, meaning like a five on the Richter scale pales in comparison to a six, but a six is nothing in comparison to a seven. And an eight is like, uh, like catastrophic, right? So a 20 out of a hundred on trust flow is really, really, really small. And the, the best way I can 
convey this is uh, in, with a visual. This is uh, from way back in the day <laughs> when PageRank was still being exported. The not the internal PageRank that Google uses, but an export, quote unquote, of PageRank scores from uh, Google that were served up by the Google Toolbar server. So let's let's have a look at what this uh, logarithmic scale means practically. Here, from a zero to ten scale, we have PageRank. Now you apply trust flow zero to one hundred, same thing. A ten, we have the top of the mountain. With a nine, we're halfway up the mountain. That's a nine out of 10. That's a 90 out of 100. An eight out of 10 is a quarter of the way up the mountain. That'd be, a, if you had a PageRank 8 homepage, you would be like over the moon. Like you have such a high power, high authority, high trust website. Amazing. And you're only a quarter of the way up the mountain. The inset there is essentially like base camp. And that's where zero through seven lives. Six is halfway in that inset. A five is a quarter of a way. Like you get the gist of this, right? Now we'll go back to the manly zone in Majestic and you see trust flow of 20 out of 100 puts it in a whole other different perspective because we think our brains just think linearly. We look at the horizon, the horizon doesn't exist. It's a mental construct. There is no point in space where the sky and the earth meet, right? We don't think in terms of worse, uh, like our, our, our brains are not programmed uh, in this way to just look at the, the horizon and remember that we're on a globe, we're on a sphere. So we look at 20 out of 100 with our linear brains and we think, oh, well, we've got a bit of ways to go, but we can totally do that. We could get to 40. We could get to 50. You know, we just need to put the hard work in there. A 50 is so remarkably different from a 20 that it's, it's, it's like saying, well, I can walk to school, so therefore I can run a, a, a marathon, the L.A. marathon, and come in hopefully in the first 20 people. <laughs> it's night and day. So I just want to make uh, that point because we got to remember we're, we're on a globe, we're on a sphere here. When we're looking at trust flow and citation flow, we're looking at logarithmic scale. So trust flow 20 out of 100, citation flow 30 of 100. I much prefer to see you with a trust flow that's a 30 and a citation flow that's a 20. It's, it's, you're skewing towards less trust, more importance. And I want all of you on this webinar to skew the other direction. So just, uh, just, to, just to, to see a concrete example of that, here, here's uh, stephanspencer.com, my personal little blog, trust flow 45, citation flow 39. And I do, want you to have those your, kind of metrics next year. To increase your trust flow, the, you talked about those trustworthy websites where you need to be as close as possible, like the Wikipedias and things like that. Is those well, the Wikipedia type of sites doesn't. Yeah, Wikipedia will not help you with that um, because those links are no followed. Yeah, but the the, the is an unpublished list or a agreement that certain uh, websites are the sites that you want links from, either as first link. Um, or then as from a site that has a link from there, so you like the second tier. So the closer you are to those type of sites, that will increase your trust flow that you're Correct. measuring here. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's the distance to the trusted seed source that matters. Yeah. And um, there's actually a tool inside of Link Research Tools called Link Juice Thief, which is really clever because... If you want to link from, let's say, a, a, uh, like an ultra competitor, one of the leaders in your space, which will never happen, but you can get a link to a site that's linking or get, that, that got a link uh, from that competitor, that's the link juice thief. It's so clever. 
Like I want to be one step away from getting a link directly from my arch nemesis. Super ninja. Love that. Another thing you can look at is your uh, inside of Majestic is the scatter graph. Uh, there are two scatter graphs. One is for the domains that are linking. But remember, it's more about the pages that are linking to you than the domains. If you look at the domains that are linking to me, wow. I got some amazingly high trust, high, high citation domains that are linking to me. And um, that's what you want to aspire towards. But where it matters the most is with the uh, external backlinks, the individual pages that are linking to you. And you want as much activity as possible happening above the diagonal where there's more trust than importance, more trust flow than citation flow, and where it's very far out from the XY axis. The farther, the better. That's where it really matters the most. Where I've got all this activity happening above the diagonal, way out here is amazing. And where it doesn't matter is way down here near the XY axis. I, I, I could care less that there's so much stuff down here. As long as it's not toxic, like super spammy, uh, bad neighborhoods linking to me. As long as, you know, it's so what if they have low trust, uh, low citation pages linking to me, if uh, they're not toxic. Where it matters for me is in, in terms of rankings and, and you know, organic traffic is above the diagonal way out here. Okay, and so you can see, especially see that with the uh, uh, referring domains. Now we'll put uh, your site back in here. A lot fewer links, um, a little bit of activity above the diagonal, but not much. I definitely want to see you skewing towards higher trust than importance with the link building that you're going to be doing. That means creating remarkable content that's link worthy, uh, cornerstone content, in other words, and then doing outreach using a tool like Pitchbox to get in front of the influencers. Uh, let me give you an example of a, a piece of cornerstone content. Not from me, this one, but um, this was the probably the result of 100 hours of work uh, by this particular uh, company. They did a, a survey of over 1,000 bloggers, and then they analyzed all the data, came up with all these findings, and uh, then they went out to influencers, major like the, the Linkerati, those influencers who have a lot of uh, link uh, equity. That they included in this amazing long form blog post all this analysis plus expert insights from those major influencers, major linkerati genius. Because if it was just like, oh, I'll get a quote uh, uh, from. This big influencer, I'll, I'll use Pitchbox to do an outreach and say, hey, I've got this really great. Well, the worst case example of doing outreach for links is to say, hey, I've got this great um, uh, thing that your readers will really get value out of. Here's the link. In fact, here's the anchor text that you, if you could use, that would be great. <laughs> That's even worse. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> like that's That's the worst. That's that's like email spam, e email spam 2.0. Don't do that. You want to make it in their best interest to shout it from the rooftops, to add it to the blog, to um, uh, add it to their social channels. Now, remember, social links do not uh, have any SEO value on their own. The benefit is to get in front of other audiences of the Linkerati through social media. And then when they add links to their blogs and websites, then that really kicks in the value. But all of the social platforms no follow their external links. YouTube, um, Wikipedia, 
um, uh, Reddit, um, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, Pinterest. They're, they're all no following their external links. So you'll get no direct SEO benefit from those links, but you'll get discovery by the Linkerati, hopefully. So the best kind of outreach to an influencer is where you don't even have to ask for the link. They, they just, they're motivated internally to add that link. This lady, uh, who I know actually, she's very super smart lady, um, Anne Handley. She'll see this and say, wow, that, that's really good. I like that. That's, um, you know, she's like a superstar in this uh, content piece, in this cornerstone uh, content. So she very likely uh, mention it in her blog and on her social channels. Whereas if it's just a, a passing quote or statistic courtesy of Anne Hanley in, in the regular body of the article, a lot less likely she's, it's, this is ego bait essentially. Very clever. And they've got these sprinkled throughout the article. Really, really smart. So you're going to have to do this kind of uh, outside the box thinking. Uh, infographics, that's another opportunity that uh, you're going to have to think differently about. If you just sent an infographic via uh, pitch box saying, hey, you've got this great infographic. It's going to be really interesting to your, to your uh, readers. Nothing. Delete. <laughs> you're just going to hit delete. If on the other hand, you send them a draft and say, look, I've got this gaping hole in this uh, infographic about the history of um, the history of testosterone by the numbers. I'm like, oh, that's that's a, like a really good uh, infographic. And it's not just vaporware. I'm not making this up. I actually have a, uh, a draft of it attached. You don't say it like that, but you get the gist of it because most of the stuff is vaporware. They get an email saying, yeah, I can contribute a guest post on this, this topic or whatever, and they don't have anything. <laughs> it's, it's vaporware. Like, I've got an infographic. Uh-huh, sure you do. Right? Only when I say, yes, I want it, I'll post it, or you're going to create something. So you, you, you send them a draft of this, uh, but it's got gaping holes in it. And you say, I'm, I'm missing this key research or these key data points or uh, the trends of, of like where things are heading and in, in the area of testosterone research, whatever. And you are just, you got your finger on the pulse on this area. I would love to get some stats, some tips, some whatever you want to contribute on, on this piece, uh, so that I can incorporate it into the infographic and I'll uh, cite you as a source. And you know, this, this will, this will be amazing. And you don't even ask for the link. And then they send it back to you and you say, hey, it's done. I've got this great infographic now. And thank you so much. It wouldn't have been possible without you. They're, they're invested in that. They've got, um, they're invested in, in the creation of it because they contributed. So you don't even have to ask for the link. You shouldn't ask for the link. Just let them decide on their own. Like, oh, this is good. Yeah, actually, my readers would like this. And the, a great thing about infographics is that they're going to want to embed the whole thing, just like you don't want to link to a, a YouTube URL and that's it. You want to embed the video, right? That's a much better user experience for your readers, your visitors. Well, if it's an infographic, I don't want to just say, there's a great infographic link. Go check it out. Trust me on it. After you click, you'll see it. No, they're going to embed it. And when they embed it, now, if they don't have your permission, they violated uh, a copyright. <laughs> So if somebody's using your infographic and they haven't cited you as the source of it, there's no link there, there's no attribution other than the graphic itself, then you can go, hello, uh, excuse me, but you're using my infographic and um, you didn't attribute me, please add a link or remove the infographic. They're gonna add the link, All right? So you use a reverse image search like uh, Google Images, is know that uh, you can do a reverse image search. Check this out. You just click on the little icon, uh, the camera icon, and the in the right hand side of the search box, 
And then there's an opportunity for you to paste a URL of an image or to upload an image from your computer. And then it will find that image and similar ones. That's reverse image uh, search. Super cool. So if I can do that, um, I can see where, um, you know, where, where there are cases that um, my infographic has gotten on websites without an attribution. And then I can hit them up and say, hey, hello. But when you're initially reaching out to the top influencers and, and, and holders of major amounts of trust flow, and you're like, how do I get a tr like this super high trust flow site to link to me? Other than pay them off, like, you know, backdoor bribe or something. How do I do it? You make them invested in the success of your content piece. Get them personally invested in it. <coughs> like uh, what I just described. So they're, they're a serious contributor to it. Like, um, uh, Brian Clark from Copy Blogger is a serious contributor, not just a, you know, uh, a, a brief mention. He's a superstar in this content piece. All right, so that was a little, a very important aside. Uh, did you have a question? No, not directly on this. Okay. All right, so that's. Um, uh, a little bit about uh, Majestic trust flow and citation flow and how you want to have the uh, skewing towards more trust, less uh, importance. Let's look at one last thing real quick. Here's what happens if I uh, visit your site because you are not on a secure site, a secure uh, server. You're not HTTPS. That's scary as hell. Now, this is, I'm using Safari now, but you also get a warning with Chrome if uh, visitors come to an HTTP version of your site and you're not secure. So you need to set up um, your site on HTTPS, and you need to do proper migration of that site. You don't just slap it up on HTTPS and then do a 301 redirect of everything because that's going to create a lot of havoc and you're going to actually lose rankings. Hopefully we'll come back after a few weeks or a few months, but it's certainly going to wreak havoc for a period of time. So a way to make this more seamless is to, uh, when you're ready to do the migration, don't migrate anything else at the same time. Don't say, oh, I'm going to do this when I do a site redesign. That's horrible. Because now you've, you've introduced multiple variables into the equation. You don't know what broke it. Uh, if your rankings got tanked, where was the problem? Was it something in the re, in the redesign? Re, you, you know, switching platforms and the URL structures changing, or we changed the the, the layout. We changed the navigation. What what broke it? Or was it the HTTPS thing? So only do HTTPS migration as a standalone thing, no other changes at the same time, and don't 301 redirect everything, but almost everything. What you should not redirect is the robots.txt and the XML sitemaps. Okay, what, what I can't understand is that, yes, I did move the hosting um, to cloud hosting because my time to first byte was very slow. So I moved the hosting to to increase that. I did have an issue with um, the Let's Encrypt uh, SL, uh, certificate, which the hosting guy sorted out. So on Firefox, on my side, it's fine. But so I can't understand. So I need to go just back to the hosting company just to find out what, what's going on. Yeah. So if you are, um, if you're serving up this uh, a 301 redirect to your um, HTTPS version of your robots.txt file um, that eliminates uh, your well if you're if you've got a single sitemap listed in the um, robots.txt file and it, when it redirects it's just listing the HTTPS version of the XML sitemaps 
This is why I like having a separate robots.txt file for the HTTP versus the HTTPS version. Because then you can get more granular in what you, uh, what sort of directives you, you provide to Googlebot for the HTTP version versus the HTTPS version, including different XML sitemaps, um, different disallows and all that. And um, you can, uh, for the XML sitemaps, keep the old XML sitemap alive. That's why you're not gonna 301 redirect it so that that speeds up the discovery of the 301 redirects to all the pages of your site. By providing an XML sitemap that says, here's my map for all the redirects that I want you to find, it's gonna speed up the discovery of those. And thus the, the discovery leading to the transfer of the page rank to those new pages on the HTTPS. So that's, uh, that's an important distinction. And you need to make a change to the HTTP version of the XML sitemap so that it, uh, it, it shows Google that it's different. Because it's the exact same XML sitemap than it was before the, the um, migration. Google's gonna say, oh, I've seen that before. I don't need to relook at that XML sitemap. So you gotta go in there and touch it, make a change to it, delete a line, add a line, do, you know, change some priority code, something, make a change. And then Googlebot, when it sees the XML sitemaps next time, it's like, oh, you made a change. Okay, let me re-spider that XML sitemap and re-spider all the URLs that it finds in that uh, sitemap. And oh, look, 301 redirect. Oh, another 301 redirect, 301 redirect, 301 redirect. So that could take, something that would have taken months for Googlebot to rediscover the, uh, all the new pages at HTTPS and compress that down to maybe several weeks. These nuances are just, they, they, they can kill you if you don't get it right. Questions, any questions? No, I think I think we are moving into an age where someone like me with very amateur SOS, uh, SEO skills are actually getting getting slaughtered out there because it's small little things like on my side thinking that the SEO uh, certificate is is correct, it's not, and that that I'm seeing now and to sort it out, it's actually very technical. So that's just the, the I think the issues that some of our part time affiliates are sitting with now. Okay. All right. So I know this was like drinking out of a fire hose and all we did was uh, and do an analysis of one site. We didn't even look at the site content, but we do need to move on to uh, some other sites. Thank you so much for being the, the, the big guinea pig here for, uh, for our analysis. Um, uh, appreciate that. Yeah, no, I really appreciate your insights and analyzing the site. Thank you. Awesome, you're welcome. All right, so uh, let's pick, now we're gonna do lightning round <laughs> for the last half hour. <clears throat> Is Snoring Devices Australia on? Uh, Pio, I believe Pio's on the line, yeah. Let me, I believe it's the same Peter, I hope so. Um, he's put up his hand to speak, so we'll accept his request. And sounds like it might take a minute to come through. So I don't know if you want to, should we bring a few people in that are, are waiting and, and maybe queue them up? Yeah. How about um, ultimatebulking.com? Ultimate bulking hands. I'm not seeing hands, put his hand up. Uh, it might be easier if I say, it looks like we've got um, broscience.co. We've got... Um, Marek from GenoGuide.com. Okay. And we've got... Probably GenoGuide, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's it. And uh, health-supplement-facts.com. Yep. Okay. So we'll bring the guys in. And there's okay. a couple of people. Um, let's have a look here. 
Sir Raj is uh, asked to look at health supplement facts, which is a new site just submitted on the on the webinar. I don't know if you want if you're interested in that or stuff. Healthsupplementfacts.com. Yeah, health, that was. Yeah. Health, this one. Oh, the same one. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was previously submitted. Okay. All right. So who's ready to go first? Who, who's uh, who's got their audio turned on? And by the way, if um, if you guys want to make the second webinar, which is in what ten hours time, uh, nine and a half hours time, to be a continuation of this one, where we cover the rest of the sites and then some, and we don't go into tools really, we don't do like a hands-on tools uh, session like we were planning, but we make this. A continuation totally cool with that so you guys tell me what works best for you perfect we'll see who turns up <laughs> okay so we've got a couple of people that will join guys if you can yeah push your mic button so hopefully we can hear you we'll take first come first serve. Uh... <laughs> Ready when you are, guys. I don't know if you can turn your mics on. Hello? Hey! Hello. Who is Hi. This? this is Peter, Snoring Devices Hi, Australia. <laughs> Perfect. It took me a moment to in install a Chrome extension. That's what that's what was taking. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I had to do that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So I got some bad news for you. OK. We're in the red. <laughs> ah. OK. I didn't do the classification of your keywords. Uh, there was some automated uh, classification that it did. Uh, got 43%, but it's not perfect. And it didn't even get halfway through. So that's OK as far as like, but this is uh, alarming. <laughs> right. This is probably one of the highest detox risk scores I've ever seen. Wow. And <laughs> I've never used PBNs. I've actually not even really done link building. Um, this is all, this is all just happened. Yeah. So I'll, and, and for your case, I'm actually going to have a look at some of these toxic links because we didn't have time to do that. I'm not going to do this for very long, but I, I want you to see very specifically what some of these links are that are linking to you. Because it's not just scraper sites that are linking to you. Okay. Okay, so here is um, something that's de-indexed from Google, webforfreaks.com, pillows for sleep apnea and snoring, page five. So this could be scraper. Uh, so your page title is probably how anti-snore pillows work and anti-snoring pillows, snoring devices Australia. Is that your title tag? In your homepage? Um, that's not all in there, but not on the homepage. Could be or on maybe a, for on a, 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 a subpage. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So this is probably scraped uh, Google results or something like that, or Bing results. Who knows? Um, how about let's look at. Okay, let's look at this lifehacker.guru. I'm so nervous like going to these sites because it's like, hopefully it's not malware infected. It doesn't, it doesn't have that flag of tox2, but I can never be too sure. Okay. Sites that are toxic have things like broken images all over the place, broken links, um, you know, bad link profiles, uh, you know, toxic neighborhoods and 
all you know all sorts of nasty stuff this looks like a a legitimate article, but I'm I'm sure it is uh, stolen, scraped from somewhere else. D do you recognize this article? Is this something that you did a guest post and got it submitted somewhere? No, I don't recognize this. Okay. All right. So this one is probably scraped off of like a lifehack.org or lifehacker.com or something like that lifehacker.guru, like, yeah, right. Um, so that's tox3 with high toxicity score. Uh, let's, let's try this one. I'm afraid to hit it, tox1. Okay, here we go. The site's been de-indexed from Google. Uh, it's not high detox risk, but it's above average. Let's hit it. Okay, here we go. And at, at face value, you might think, well, this is decent content. I don't understand. Like, it's not about uh, the article looking useful uh, at first glance. Remember, the algorithms that are looking are looking for spamming and manipulation and, and um, unnatural patterns. So there are unnatural patterns that put this in the in the high, higher risk uh, side of things. Kind of interesting that they have stripped all links from this page. They probably scraped it from somewhere. Um, and then they've dropped a link to you. That looks so fake, right? Yes. I, I have no idea. Places where it should be like a CPAP, if I want to know what CPAP is, I should be able to click on it and go to a really helpful article on WebMD or whatever that explains CPAP and CPAP machines and stuff. But all of the places where you'd think contextually relevant links would appear, none are, are there. And then one uh, link dropped at the end. Definitely looks very suspect. And that's a link I would want to disavow. Uh, let's try another one, one more. We'll go one more. Um, and we can sort by the rules. So let's, let's sort by, um, by the rules instead of the re detox risk. Okay, here we go. And what I'm looking for or what I'm looking at is I want to see how many tox ones there are before it moves to tox two. We we have a big problem with lots of tox um, toxic links. Okay, so we've got a full page of tox three. If I were to switch this to a hundred, probably see that. Uh, the whole thing would be filled with tox three. And then if I start going page by page by page and I see tox three, tox three, tox three, and if I started at the beginning where it was all tox one and it was just five, 10, 15 pages of tox ones, oh, that would, that would really suck, <laughs> right? And then you started having to dig through these and uh, confirm that, yep, they're all toxic and I, I, I need to do the cleanup on these. Some of the mo more obvious scraper sites, Google is well uh, ahead of you on that, and they know that, oh yeah, that's a nasty scraper site. Uh, that just happens. But you can't assume that Google's gonna always get that right. So you, you should probably not worry too much about like skipping over the scraper sites and just disavow, clean up everything. You'll never hear from the scraper sites when you do a uh, outreach to them. Okay, That's so fine. You, just dis disavow those. Now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what I do is I just um, outreach to everybody, all the toxic links and uh, site owners and the scraper sites will be in there too. Cause it's not that much effort to throw those in as well. 
because uh, you're using automated tools, Pitchbox uh, or whatever. And then disavow everybody who's non-compliant and just recognize that you're not going to get anything out of the scrapers. They, they okay. will end up just in the disavow. All right, so there's that. Uh, how about we go to uh, your site? Because we sure. haven't been to a site itself. We got stopped by the scary message. <laughs> um, Let me ask you, why not a .com.au? That was something I had looked into at one time. Um, there is a there is some cost associated to it, um, and I should reconsider that. That's that's not a bad idea. I think I just uh, was kept away from by the price at the moment. Yeah, I, I would spend that money. Okay, it's not exorbitantly expensive, but it certainly sends a different signal to Google. If that's your target audience, right? How many? See, what we're looking to do is differentiate ourselves from the spammers, right? And the, the sites that don't have EAT. If you don't have expertise, you don't have authoritativeness, you don't have trustworthiness, then you've just gone with the easy route. Maybe you just have a fake persona as the uh, as the site author or site owner. Maybe you and you have privacy guard on your domain. And you've only paid for one year of the registration because your site's probably going to get burned to the ground anyways because you're a spammer. And, uh, you know, all these different things that are the hallmarks of spam. They don't, they don't pay for multiple years. They don't go, go through the hoops to register a, a .au because it is so much more of a headache and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So whatever you can do to differentiate yourself from all the spammers the better you're going to fare, especially when it's early days and you haven't proven yourself out to Google yet. You haven't built up that trust profile that they're really looking for. And in the meantime, you're saying, no, no, trust me, Google. Uh, even though I'm not there yet, uh, I'm up and coming. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I just just got my medical degree. I'm, I'm just setting up a, <laughs> you know, my, uh, uh, my practice and, you know, I got the degrees on the wall and everything. No, no, I'm real. So prove it in other ways until then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So from a content perspective, this is very typical, and this is a big problem. Home pages that are very bloggy are all about whatever are the latest blog posts. There's no stable, uh, consistent keyword theme being presented to the search engines here. It's just whatever is the latest of the moment content. You get where I'm going? So if I want this page to sing to the search engines for the term storing devices and related terms, like um, so if I'm trying to rank for storing devices and I don't have long form content, I just have little snippets and it just happens to be whatever the latest blog posts are. It's all very ephemeral content and it, it, it shifts and it, it's, it blows in the wind. Whatever the content, uh, the, the focus, the, the keyword focus for this page is, is just dependent on whatever is the of the moment content. Uh, right. Snippets. Okay. So that's a problem. And I want state, I want stability. And I want stability also in the URLs. So if I have a, uh, I don't know, let's say a New Year's resolution guide, like here's here's here are the uh, health uh, guidelines and the devices and the checklists and the planners and calendars and things that you're going to need, the apps, etc., that are going to help you turn over a new leaf or, or you know improve your life in 2019. Here's our New Year's guide. New Year's resolution guide, and you change it every year. So now it's New Year's resolution guide 2019, and the next year it's New Year's resolution guide 2020 in the, in the URL after your .com or .com AU. Now you're starting all over again. You've, you, you decided to start from scratch every year. Terrible idea. 
stable, stable keyword theme, stable um, URL, like stability. That we want stability. So what would be the 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 alternative that would be much better for SEO? Keep the URL the same. It's uh, New Year's resolution guide or New Year's resolution helper. That's it. And it's the same URL from year to year to year to year. Let's say you want to take last year's content before you replace it, <coughs> archive it, put it at uh, New Year's Resolutions Guide 2018. That's fine. Nobody cares about last year's content. You could delete it or you could archive it to a, another URL that isn't inheriting all that great link equity over the years. So same thing with holiday gift guides and all. It's it's this is all very uh, applicable. So you and, and that's why there's so many websites that are doing really really well with SEO that are continually updating their cornerstone content pieces instead of just letting them um, turn to seed or to, to rot. Right? Here's here's a great article from uh, Backlinko about writing from an SEO perspective. Backlinko.com slash SEO dash copywriting. That's the URL. He keeps it the same URL from year to year and he updates it regularly. A year doesn't go by where he hasn't made a major update to it. He's not just changing the date in the last updated uh, part of the page. Okay, last updated March 14th, 2018. He's making substantial changes to this document. This is a living document. And it's one of his cornerstone pieces of content. And it's long form content, but it's done in a way like this is going to go on and on and on as it loads. You're going to see I can scroll forever. Super, super long, but it's very readable. It's very cons uh, it's easily consumed because the the paragraphs are broken up into into small bite sized pieces. In fact, paragraphs are oftentimes just a word or two. This is called a bucket br brigade. When you see a bucket brigade, you're like, what? Give me the rest of it. It's like a cliffhanger. Now, now what? Now what? I'm, I'm not going to stop reading there. So you start incorporating bucket brigades into your um, into your articles and your content, your product content, etc., to keep people on the page and increase your engagement metrics. That's important because if you get high bounce rate, Google doesn't pay attention to bounce rates because they're not spying on your Google Analytics. What they are watching is what's called dwell time. If people are dwelling a long time on your page and not coming back, not pogo sticking back to the search results and picking another listing, Google tracks that. Google knows that, hey, they just clicked on your listing and two seconds later, they're back and they're clicking on number three. Number two must suck. Let's give that a demotion. So that's a user engagement metric that they do uh, watch because they're tracking clicks from the search results. They aren't spying on Google Analytics. Uh, your Google Analytics, everybody would leave Google Analytics in droves and they'd go to you know, Adobe Analytics or whatever. Right? So bounce right. rate, time on site, they're not looking at that, they're looking at dwell time. And if we want good dwell time, we want short paragraphs, we want lots of visuals. Look how much uh, visual uh, stimulation there is here. I can't scroll and see, uh, not see, images and the images have red boxes and red circles and um, red uh, arrows and underlines and and like visual interests you know to click to tweets and things are are very visual the the subheads are very visual you know colored backgrounds and everything this is very very good so emulate this and not just what he, he's eating his own dog food. He's applying all 17 of his copywriting techniques that he talks about in this article and across all of his uh, cornerstone content pieces. And they continue to get links year after year after year. And he continues to update them. So, so use that as kind of a best practice. Um, but you, you need a stable, uh, uh, strong keyword theme coming through here. Okay. <clears throat> right now. I'm not seeing it. I mean, you have mentioned sleep a bunch of times. You got sleep related research. You got uh, sliders. Sliders are terrible. Like if you want to kill your conversion, this is a great way to do it. So 
sliders are conversion. Uh, sliders, conversion, killers. Uh, uh, across the board, everybody in, in the conversion uh, expert uh, space, uh, all the CRO people, conversion rate optimization people agree, sliders suck for conversion. And if they suck for conversion, don't have them. Even if they don't uh, negatively affect your SEO. Right. So, so okay, homepage redesign. Don't use automatic sliders. Yeah, homepage redesign. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Social proof you need to increase uh, conversion uh, user satisfaction and comfort and not have the high bounce rate and the high uh, and the, the, the low dwell time. I have no social proof here other than large number of uh, YouTube subscribers, which can totally be gamed. You can buy YouTube subscribers. So I, I don't see any uh, doctor testimonials, uh, any book covers, any as seen on logos, any uh, big brands that are carrying your um, uh, your product. You know, in, in, in retail, like I don't see any any um, social proof there, so that'll help with your conversion as well. So this this is just of everybody saying, don't use sliders, don't use carousels, they suck. Chris Goward from Wider Funnel, I've had him on my podcast. Um, it's a that's uh, another thing. <laughs> You, if you are wondering, well, how, do I, how do I do as the next step? Besides show up for the next webinar in, in nine hours. <laughs> not all of you can afford to hire me. I'm not inexpensive. But you can get a free in SEO, uh, online marketing, Facebook advertising, conversion optimization, analytics, email marketing, all at Marketing Speak. Dot com, which is an incredible podcast, like as in the world in these areas, including some of the top marketers of all time, like Jay Abraham, Dan Kennedy, Seth Godin, are on, and it's completely free. It's on iTunes, it's on Stitcher, it's you know, all that. So I've had Chris Chris Gower on uh, my podcast talking about conversion, rate optimization, and testing, and all that. I've had Tim, he's the creator of the uh, rotating banners are absolutely evil and should be you don't need to test something that's obviously broken An obviously broken thing just remove it um, okay and I'm here we didn't get very far through our list but um, I think with what we did cover you all should have a, uh, a set of next actions that are probably universal universally applicable the addition of, of the different social proof elements and of uh, uh, removal of sliders and that sort of stuff and the uh, adding of stable keyword themes using more stable URLs and uh, making those more evergreen, no more ephemeral content, evergreen, 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 and make those evergreen pieces next level evergreen where it's cornerstone content and it's just so damn good, it's remarkable. It's worth remarking about. That's from Seth Godin from The Purple Cow. Love that guy. He's a genius. Uh, he's like the marketing godfather. And he says, remarkable is the the new standard that you have to meet. And his definition of remarkable, worth remarking about. Doesn't have to be the best, the most interesting, most useful, most humorous piece of content out there. But it has to have something about it that's worth remarking about. Right now, you don't have anything, Peter, on this homepage that's worth remarking about. And that's easily fixable, though. We got to have some standout thing that make people go, "Wow, that's right. that's badass. That's awesome. That's really that's that's something. That's that's something I should tell my friends about." I, I do have one question with regard to what you're um, referring is to ephemeral content. Um, would you say that there is any place uh, that would still be appropriate for sort of things that are kind of like timely topics in the news that are not necessarily your cornerstone content, but that kind of are interesting sort of to tweet that, um, you know, 
uh, with so maybe like still like a, a blog um, feature or something. Um, or would you, I, would you put, would would you put any focus? It. You would stay away from it totally. You, you have very limited resources. We all do for content creation. Why put it in stuff that's just going to be flash in the pan unless it could go very viral right. while, while it's a trending topic. But um, OK, so let's say that Trump uh, mentions in a, uh, some sort of press interview that he gets three hours of sleep a night. And you're like, oh, I want to I want to totally lay into that one. OK, that's fine. Uh, there, there's, uh, you can newsjack that one, but you got to do it in a way that in two years time, when hopefully Trump is no longer in, in, in office. And I know I'm showing, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm polarizing right now. I shouldn't do that. Um, two years time when he's no longer relevant to the conversation online, I should still look at that article headline and say, I got to read that. This is this is the advice from the top experts, the top sleep experts in the world for Trump, who gets three hours of sleep a night and everybody else who's sleep deprived. Now, that's a terribly long title I just totally made up on the fly, but you get the gist of it. Evergreen. Two years from now, totally got to read that article. OK. Yeah, great question. All right, guys, we are down to two minutes. Uh, Andrew, any last um, kind of, I don't know, housekeeping or? Um, well, yeah, so we had, uh, we've, I think we've got a couple more sites to run through, which we can pick up on in, I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's nine hours time, um, something yeah. along those lines. So um, I just encourage anybody that hasn't had their site reviewed, that wants it reviewed, please, um, I know it's not far away and some of us have to sleep, um, but do come back on uh, to the next webinar and we'll pick up where we left off here. Uh, and then depending on time, we may do a deep dive into some of the tools that you mentioned. So, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see how it goes. Um, and, and you guys can vote, right? So you show up for the, uh, the second webinar and you all uh, vote. Well, we could do a little poll and you say, yeah, we totally want to spend the rest of the time on uh, the, the rest of the, the site reviews or half and half, right? Half on tools and half on the site reviews, or let's just dive right into the tools and, and the hands-on training on that uh, that we were planning on doing anyways. And you guys can pick. So we could do that at the beginning as a poll to see uh, that we're meeting your needs, what you want. And like I said, even if you can't make uh, the webinar and you can't um, hire me and, and my, my team or whatever, totally cool, start digging into the stuff that is um, for free on marketingspeak.com and on stephanspencer.com. I've got a resources area with archived webinars and, and videos and things like that, as well as the marketing speak episodes, tons on SEO, on link building. Christoph Kemper, that was a two-parter. He's the founder of Link Research Tools. And we talk about 301 redirects and 302s actually being better for SEO sometimes. We talk about uh, doing a link detox, why we have to do uh, removal requests as well as the disavows, a deep dive into that stuff. If you have uh, a HTTPS migration, there's an episode where we deep dive into that. Tons of free content, marketingspeak.com. Also, um, the team here, as you probably already know, have a lot of tools, access to tools. So if you do want data exported from certain tools, then do speak to your affiliate mentor. Um, so obviously, the tool that we ran through today, um, you know, we can pull some reports on, on your behalf. So um, yeah, get in touch. And we'll see you in awesome. nine hours' time. Nine hours, yeah. Thank Go you. Go take a nap. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. Bye, everyone.